Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Marzillo. I'm a partner engineer here at Snowflake. And in this video, I'm going to introduce uh, where Azure OpenAI fits into the, the, the Snowflake ecosystem for, for generative AI. And then also walk through a new quick start that we have that shows users out there how to get started with using Snowflake and Azure OpenAI, along with Azure ML and, uh, and Azure ML Workspace um, to kind of be the, the linchpin to, to connect both of those services. Important to note that um, for folks who are going to be walking through the quick start, it's expected that everyone has a, a Snowflake account. And if you don't have one, you can spin up a free one pretty quickly. Um, and also have access to uh, an Azure subscription um, with you know Azure ML and Azure OpenAI. Um, and also um, some of the, the, the functionality that we have with Azure ML is in public preview. Um, so you'll go to the top right corner there and make sure you have um, public preview features turned on within your Azure ML Studio. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so looking broadly at Snowflake's approach to using generative AI and LLMs within our platform, you can see this architecture that we've been presenting over the course of the last several months or so. The idea being here is that you have your Snowflake data down there at the bottom of the architecture, and you have a number of different ways of utilizing generative AI with that data. So in the top right, you can see we're going to have LLM powered experiences. So some really cool functionality coming out related to document AI, text to code for Copilot and search. And initially in that kind of middle big rectangle, you have the Snowpark container services functionality, right? So the ability to use native applications, open source LLMs, right with inside your Snowflake environment, inside of Snowpark container services. And these are experiences, both the, the, the top right LLM power experiences and Snowpark container services with LLMs. These are services and functionality that are, are on their way in the next couple of months, right? So we're going to start seeing a lot of announcements around these being in preview, public preview, and in due time GA. But for now, right now, you know, the common pattern that we're seeing is using external LLMs or LLMs with our partners, such as Azure OpenAI. And there are a number of different patterns um, to, to use those external LLMs. So using native connections that we already have with Power Apps or with Azure ML that we're going to cover today, or using external functions or using Snowpark external access or using Streetwood. And in this video specifically, so we're going to talk about using Azure ML. Um, that said, there are a number of different ways um, to securely access those Azure OpenAI resources. And then looking at why Snowflake and Azure OpenAI, right? We have many joint customers that are already leveraging Snowflake. They love Snowflake's ease of use, security posture. We also understand that Azure OpenAI is really at the forefront right now. So um, we've made sure to, to kind of let our, our, our joint customers know that this is certainly a supported pattern. Um, we have a number of different architectures out there that we published um, to, to support those use cases. And in this specific video, we're gonna be talking about using um, Azure ML, but you can see here, you know, we have lots of audiences and joint customers that are using these tools for things like summarizing data, um, documents, yeah, building chat bots, information retrieval, and things like that. So let's go into the quick start now. So if we come here, come back up to the first step. Um, so this is inside Snowflake's quick start page. If you go to Snowflake quick starts, you'll see uh, getting started with Azure OpenAI for Snowflake quick start. And in this use case, we're going to be building out this architecture, right? So I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, what the architecture is doing is it's, you know, leveraging your Snowflake data and then registering a data set in uh, a Snowflake data as a data set in Azure ML with a native connector that we have. And then leveraging a Azure ML notebook that then utilizes prompt flow with Azure OpenAI to generate some results. So pretty straightforward, simple use case here. The idea being, let's just get folks kind of started and familiar with the mechanics of getting all this set up. The use case is a you know retail-ish use case, um, sort of next best offer, um, you know, where we're going to simply kind of create a, a 10 row table in Snowflake that has historical purchase information that also leverages data from Snowflake Marketplace um, that shows the mean age for the zip code uh, for each of the customers and where the purchases were made. Um, so with that, we can go ahead and kind of like start actually building it out. So if I kind of zoom back out, you can see here we have these, uh, these SQL scripts here that you can kind of copy and paste. You just highlight that and copy it and then bring it over to your, your Snowflake instance and paste it in here. And all we're doing is creating a database, creating an extra small warehouse, 
And then with that database, we're creating this purchase history table that has three different columns here that have, or I should say four, it has ID, recent purchases, zip code, and median age, right? So you can see here this person who lives in, you know, this zip code with a pretty young median age, you know, they purchased milk, bread, and eggs, right? You have somebody else who purchased, you know, pasta, tomato sauce, and some garlic. Looks like they're making an Italian dish. Another person here purchased chips, salsa, guacamole, tortillas. Looks like they're making uh, Mexican food. So go ahead and, and run all of this to get, get that created. And once that's done, we can move on to the fourth step, which is setting up your Azure ML workspace. So if you have it already, please go to compute in your Azure ML workspace and get a compute instance spun up. Go ahead and just use the, the, the one of the standard recommended instances that's less expensive um, for the sake of this quick start. Um, you know, nothing bigger than that is is necessary. And then once you have that up and running, what we'll do is we'll work on getting this data imported, um, the, the Snowflake data registered and imported from from Snowflake into Azure ML. And I can kind of quickly show you what this looks like inside of Azure ML Studio. But what you'll have to do is come down here to the Data tab and you'll click on data connections and you'll click, click create to create a new connection, but I already have one created. So I'll just click edit here on this one and show you what it winds up looking like. So you define your Snowflake instance right here, and then you point to a database, the database that we just created that one, and then you'll create point to the, the small warehouse. Currently we're just in public preview with this. So it's username and password. So you'd have to use username and password um, with Azure key store to kind of lock that down. But soon to come, in the months to come, we'll have um, SSO OAuth uh, authentication for a, a GA experience for our users. And once that's that connection set up, you'll move on to the data import tab and you'll click create data import. You'll click Snowflake, click next. You'll define your uh, data set. And I think here in the quick start, we specifically say to call it uh, purchase history, one word, yeah, like this. So go ahead and, and, and define it like that. So it's a little bit easier for the downstream steps. And you can copy this quick SQL query here as well. I'll, I'm going to call my demo too since I've already created a purchase history uh, data set. Click next. You're going to leverage that connection that you just created and then paste in the query. Uh, no semicolon. Click next. I click on other data stores, workplace blob store, and click next. And then I'll, I'll select that top file. Uh, there to, to drop the data. And so what's happening with this connection, right, is that we're creating a job that registers the Snowflake data and imports it as an ML table inside of the, the, the blob storage associated with your, your Azure ML account. So this should take, you know, maybe, you know, 45 seconds or so to get that data registered. But while that's, while that's running, um, we can, we can kind of go ahead and move on to step six where we um, will deploy an Azure OpenAI model. And this is a very simple example, right? The point of this quick start isn't to go deep into the weeds of how to evaluate uh, Azure OpenAI models and how to select one, but rather just kind of quickly get one deployed and then use it with inside prompt flow with Snowflake data. So if you come inside your Azure, um, your portal, um, you can create a new Azure OpenAI service. And we detail kind of the simple steps of how to do that inside the quick start. But once you have that service um, up and running, you can click into it, click explore, and you'll come right here into Azure OpenAI Studio, right? And for this quick start, what we'll do is we're just gonna use a simple foundational model. We'll use the, the GPT-35 Turbo here and kind of click that, click deploy, and then we're saying to go ahead and name it GPT-35 Turbo simply, right? So once that, that model is deployed, you'll see it right here, um, and you can kind of see all the details associated with that, with that deployment as well. Um, okay. So now that you have this, this deployed, this should, should again take, you know, seconds to, to, to get that Azure OpenAI deployed. Um, you should now have, um, your model, uh, I'm sorry, you should have the, the data set should be registered. The model's deployed. And now we can kind of work on kind of the, the, the two big orchestration steps here associated with this quick start. So the first one we're going to work on is building out this prompt flow inside of Azure ML Studio. So the way that you do that, right, and, and I, let me kind of start with the end here in mind because it's kind of easier. What we're going to be left with in this ML prompt flow is a uh, LLM node here that's going to set up taking two different parameters, which are two different fields from our data set, purchase history, and median age, and then passing them as a sort of prompt to generate a result, 
right? So the way that you'll you'll get started with that is going into Azure ML Studio, going into Prompt Flow, clicking Create, and then clicking Standard Flow. And um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and kind of just click into the one that I've already created and show you what the finished product looks like. But what you'll have to do is you, in the, the quick start details, this is you'll have to delete several of the, the, the pre-existing nodes and you'll go ahead and copy and paste this, this prompt up here into the LLM node right here. And what you're doing, right, is you're, um, you're basically kind of creating that, that prompt that's going to take in the parameters of purchase history and median age. Additionally, what you're going to have to do is when you create this LLM, uh, node inside of Promptful, you have to connect to your Azure OpenAI resource and then point to the model that we just deployed. Uh, make sure API is sent to chat. You can leave temperature set at one. And then you're defining, you know, the, the fact that, you know, purchase history is going to be uh, an input that's taken from inputs.purchase underscore history. Similarly with, with median age. And then you'll you'll leave this out, output set as LLM underscore whatever the, the the name of the prompt flow is that uh, the, the the node I'm sorry the node output is being passed to this output as well which will be defined as output in the notebook that we create. So once you have that done, you'll save the prompt flow and you'll deploy it as well. And once that's done, we can kind of move on to um, developing our notebook. So what we'll do first here with this notebook is we have to clone over a, a repo and it's a samples repo that we have in Snowflake underscore labs. So you kind of just copy and paste this code. You'll come over to notebooks. You could open up a terminal session right here and go ahead and copy and paste and run that. And you'll get a, a samples a folder as uh, as detailed in the quick start. Um, and then you come into OpenAI hyphen NB and open up your OpenAI dot iPi notebook. So while folks are doing that, the what we'll, we'll do here really quick is, is take a detour. We have to um, handle some manage identity access um, inside of the Azure portal. So what you'll do is you'll go back to the uh, Azure portal and you'll go to find your, your Azure ML workspace service. And then um, you'll have to assign the role Azure ML data scientist and effectively what you're doing is you're giving the prompt flow endpoint the appropriate role to interact with your Azure ML workspace, right? So you're going into the Azure ML workspace and then re, uh, assigning this role to that endpoint so that the, the interaction can happen. So once you have that done, you can go back into your notebook and um, what, you'll, um, what you'll do is you have to kind of just fill in um, a handful of, of different um, kind of templated um, items inside of the notebook, right? So if you come into the, this is a notebook that we have, um, what you'll do is you'll define your Azure subscription ID, your Azure resource group name, and your Azure uh, ML workspace name. And you're setting this up here to, to basically access that data set that we just registered using the native connector from Azure ML to Snowflake. Also worth mentioning, that for the sake of this quick start, we do a couple of quick pip installs. So you want to uncomment lines two through four up here first to install um, some of the, the Snowpark packages and some of the other packages that we need. In the real world, you'll likely be using some sort of environment to, to, to run this. But for the sake of the quick start, we'll, we'll, we're just kind of doing a quick pip install here. Um, and then um, what we do, so once you install the packages, you'll uh, connect to the ML client here. And then we're going to access that data set that we just registered using the, the, the Snowflake connector in Azure ML. And then once you have that connected, you have to uh, access your endpoint URL and your API key for that endpoint. So this is the, the prompt flow that you deployed, right? So when you, when you deploy that endpoint, you can kind of come here and you'll see, you should have access to some, uh, to some endpoints and you'll have to grab the, the endpoint and the primary key, right? And then use that information to uh, populate the flow endpoint and the flow primary key. And then once you have that, this, this is sort of the star of the show, right? What this, what this block of code is doing is grabbing uh, the recent purchases field and the median age field and uh, passing them to that prompt flow, which then utilizes those parameter information 
with the prompt and it generates a response from the Azure Open AI model that we deployed. So you're then left with um, some generated recommendations, right? So looking at you know, this person that we looked at before that purchased milk, bread, and eggs, we're recommending you know butter, avocado, granola, right? We take a look at that person, it looked like they were making Italian food, so pasta, tomato sauce, and garlic. And we're gonna recommend, or the models will recommend Parmesan cheese, Chianti, um, you know, some artichokes or something like that. Um, and then, you know, the, the the person looked like they were making some uh, Mexican dish, uh, chips, salsa, guacamole. Um, we're gonna recommend some some cervezas here, some beer, uh, some ground beef, and maybe you know, some hot peppers or something like that. And then the final step here is simply using Snowpark to connect to your Snowflake account. So you want to populate your Snowflake account, your username, your password, um, and then leverage you know the same database and, and warehouse as before, and write that that data back to uh, to Snowflake. And then once it's written back to Snowflake, you can kind of come back to your Snowflake account, and then you know, and then just do a, a quick select all uh, from that purchase history. You'll see you know, all the, uh, the, the, the generated data here, um, that came out of that, that model. So with that, you know, this, this quick start should take you, you know, all in, you know, maybe about, you know, 60 minutes or hopefully a little bit less as you're kind of pausing and, and starting this video. Um, but the idea is that, you know, we helped you in this quick start set up an architecture that utilizes Azure open AI with Azure ML Prompt Vault and Snowflake and should hopefully get you started while on your way to kind of taking some things, um, taking some use cases that you have that you've been thinking about and, and easily and successfully get them deployed using Snowflake data with Azure ML and Azure OpenAI. Okay, thanks a lot. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your, your Snowflake account team. Um, let them know that you, you watched this video, point them in my direction, Matt Marzillo, partner engineer here. Um, additionally, we have additional services our resources who work uh, at Microsoft that are dedicated to Snowflake. So folks know Shankar, please uh, work with your Microsoft account teams, have uh, have them get connected with Shankar. Um, and we'd be more than happy to kind of help you out and get you enabled with these, uh, with these use cases. Thanks a lot.